Hey guys, it's Ross here. Now I've had a few of you ask for simple effects that you can make all inside of Premiere Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a really simple and easy vertigo effect that you can add to your footage all inside of Premiere Pro. Now, if you're interested in Premiere Pro effects or tutorials, then let me know in the comments section below the sort of videos you'd like to see. Now I'm using the latest version of Premiere Pro here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my first clip, right click and create a new sequence from my clip. Now that automatically puts it on a timeline here. I'm just going to zoom in. This vertigo rotation effect works really well with drone footage where your drone is either flying forwards or backwards or it's even moving up and down. Now all we need to do with our clip selected, I'm going to go to the front of the timeline here. I'm going to come up to effects and I'm going to apply a scale a position and a rotation keyframe all here at the start. I'm gonna go across to where I want my clip to sort of end. So probably I'm gonna use the majority of the clip here, maybe, maybe around 10 seconds. I'm gonna create another keyframe for my position scale and rotation. Now with my rotation, what I want to do is just add a slight bit of positive rotation on this. I'm just gonna make sure I can fit this in the screen. And you can see we've got this little bit here which sticks out over the edge and we want to remove that. So I can simply just scale this in very slightly here just to cover that up. Now I don't need to remove the whole thing because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply this cinemascope over the top. So I can drag that straight over the top. So that's going to be used to hide that layer or that little bit underneath that we, that we can't see. Now, if you don't add that, then you can basically scale your footage up to hide that corner. Now, when I come back to the beginning of my clip, what I need to do is scale this right in. So somewhere around 170% will work well. I'm also going to move the camera up. Now you can just add a straight zoom over the top of your footage, which I've seen a lot of people do, but just to get better results, it's best to try and move the camera or position it on the beginning of your clip so that when the camera zooms out, it's trying to stay as level as possible. So you'll see what I mean here when we play through this in a second, but what we need to do is we need to try and line the camera up here in the middle. So that's what our position keyframes are for. And with the scale, what you're trying to do is you're trying to match that movement of your drone. So you're trying to keep the frame roughly the same sort of size as we're moving through the clip to get the best sort of results. Now I can move this out very slightly here. And you can always go through and adjust these even more. The other thing I'm going to do is also add that bit of rotation at the beginning of my clip here. You can see as we play through this, you can see we're getting that effect and you can see in the background here that it's adjusting the background and my foreground at different rate. There's lots of different names for this effect, but it's mainly known as the vertigo effect. And it's basically where you're moving the camera back and you're zooming in on your camera at the same time. Now I'm gonna line up with my keyframes here and I'm just gonna clip the end of this clip. So bring that in. Then I want to nest this clip. Now the reason we nest this after we've done all that animation is because it'll keep those keyframes in that same position. And now when we make any adjustments in speed or speed ramping, it's not going to affect those keyframes that are there at the start and the end. So now what I can do is I can right click on this little icon here, come down to time remapping and come to the speed controls. Now what that does is it automatically, if I scale up here so we can really see what we're doing, what that is doing, it's bringing up the speed menu. Now this line here now becomes our speed control. So if I was just to drag up on this line, you see that this basically end of this clip comes in. Now if I hover over this, it'll tell me 
what percentage we've sped it up by. So in this case, it's 228% we've sped it up by. So to really exaggerate this effect, you want to try and speed up your footage. Now, if your clip's already moving really fast, then you won't need to worry about it. But you can see we're getting that effect already. Now, one other cool thing you can do here with speed ramping is I can come over here and select my pen tool or hitting P on the keyboard, and I can basically create a speed ramp in and out. So again, if I want it really fast at the start here, I'm gonna create a keyframe here, and then I want it quite slow here in the middle and then to speed up towards the end. And it creates these little icons here. Now, if I grab one of the ends of these and drag it out like this, we get this little thing here, which is this little blue thing, this little blue box. Now, what I can do is if I drag up on the start of my clip, so I'm making the beginning part faster, we get this little line that appears like this. So if I zoom in again, just so we can see what we're doing, if I click on this, you can see it's quite a linear sort of drop. So it's gonna go quite suddenly into my slow motion. And what I want to do is I want to try and smooth that out. So I can just grab these little corners here and drag this like this, it's gonna create an S curve to smooth that out. So the width of this clip determines how long will that transition of that speed change is going to be. And the beginning line and the middle line is how fast those individual parts of that clip are moving. So you can mess around with those to get different results depending on the look that you're going for, but I can also create another one here to speed ramp my footage out. So that's how you work with speed ramping. Now also another little tip here is to apply some motion blur to your clip. Now you can come down here to the transform properties. So if I search under effects for transform, I can come here and add that to my clip. Now down the bottom, we end up with the shutter angle. So I'm gonna turn this off and make this 180. And that will add a little bit of motion blur. It might not be so obvious in this particular clip, but if you have a lot of movement with things really flying past the camera quickly, this is how you can add some motion blur to your footage inside of Premiere. Now I'm gonna grab another clip here to show you another example of where this effect really works well. This effect works really well when you have something really close to the camera and also something really far away because it really exaggerates that movement. So I'm gonna apply the same techniques. I'm gonna create a position, a scale, and this one I'm not going to apply a rotation to just so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna to go to around sort of 10 seconds like we did with the other clip and just create two more keyframes here and then really zoom in on my clip here and move the camera out. So again, as I scrub through my timeline, you can see that we're really getting that exaggeration there of the building. It's almost like the clip is being compressed. So really exaggerating that effect as we're kind of zooming into our footage. Now you can also add a rotation to this again and you can zoom in even further here at the start. But the one thing to note is these are 1080p clips or HD. And now if you use a 4K clip or 4K footage, then you can really zoom into your footage without losing a lot of that detail. So there's a really simple effect you can apply to your footage all inside of Premiere Pro. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.